So, uh, Sue, it's the pretty piece you got here. It's a beautiful baby right here. You did a really nice job with it. I did an awesome job with this. You did. I thought I'd take a minute and um, you sent me the video of you doing it, but it all went by so quickly. I don't do videos of stuff much. So you're only used to doing live videos. Yeah? Yeah. So I thought we'd, we'd take a minute and talk about this beautiful cabinet that you got done. It's, my, it's beautiful. It's lovely. Yeah. You see, I got... I got I got my little ribbons in there. Yeah, you got a nice transfer. Right transfer in there. I got the, the full arm. I had to split it into the three parts that it comes in. So we didn't have to slice or dice it at all. I did have to get a little creative on the upper part here, but it looked really good. Yeah, no, I like it a lot. Um, one of the things I wanted to ask you about was we all loved this piece, but none of us wanted to touch it. Well, you've kind of given it a name that kind of made us stay away. Well, when Melissa brought this beat up, battered, filthy, Stuck in the back of somebody's garage piece. This is a find from somebody's garage. looking thing at the bottom of it and I just immediately shut it and called it the mouse cabinet. No, you called it the dead mouse cabinet. Okay, it's the dead mouse cabinet. It was the, she, she told us there was a dead mouse inside of it. It looked like a dead mouse. So we knew whoever cleaned it was going to have to clean out the remnants of a dead mouse that was stuck to the bottom of this cabinet. And, and, and for that, I, I, I got the white lightning because white lightning cleans. And I thought if anything's gonna clean an old, grossed out, little old mouse from a cabinet, it was gonna be the white lightning. Yeah. So she mixed up the Dixie Bell white lightning into some nice, really hot water. Yes, I did. And, uh, a and got a going. rag and a, a little putty scraper, putty knife. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I was teaching a class at the time, thankfully with only one student that happens to be a friend of ours. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> so right out in front of everybody, she's starting, she opens the doors, gets out the Dixie Bell, mixes it up. I'm talking to the student in the class. And she blurts out, hey, it's not a dead rat. It, or wasn't, a dead it mouse. wasn't a dead mouse. I was so excited it wasn't a dead mouse. And, and, and the student is like, what? 
So then we had to, of course, explain the story we just told you. Yeah, no, it, it turns out that it was, um, it was wax. And apparently it had gathered a lot of, I don't know, maybe cat fur or something. So it just, it really looked like a deflated, decomposed little mouse. Little mouse. But it cleaned up like wax. <laughs> so... Um, yeah. So, okay, so you use general finishes. I use my general finishes. This Work. is uh, sage, so it's a beautiful, no, beautiful basil. green. Basil. Sage. Yeah, I know. Yeah, same thing, right? Sage, basil. Yeah. I'll be working on this till the day I die. So this is basil, yeah. and then the inside is the uh, alabaster. alabaster. Yeah, or the inside is alabaster. And the alabaster looks really great with these flowers in here because they've got the same creamy color. Look, there's the beautiful inside. And she did paint the no inside. Oh, mousy. So there are no remnants no of what we thought was a dead mouse that turns out to just been wax. I got my little and some drawer. dust and fur. I got my little drawer. I think I might have painted that one. But no, it's fine. Oh, yeah. See, it works just fine. That's all um, nice and pretty and clean in there. It's beautiful yeah, one. Yeah, it's all cleaned out and it is um, coated in two coats. While general finishes doesn't require a top coat, we did opt to add some flat out flat. Well, especially since I did a, a, a wet distress on it. Yeah. So it, it definitely was gonna need a top coat after that. Yeah, so once, it doesn't require a top coat, but once you knock it back, you, you do want to cover it. Um, so it's all beautiful and it's ready for a new home. It's very beautiful. If, you, if you've got a small kitchen or a small dining room and you, and you need a nice little place to put some little pretties in. And you know where I think it would be lovely? No. In a bathroom with folded towels and stuff. Ooh. I think it would be really lovely in a bathroom with folded very, towels. Put and some nice little bottles of, of your, your smelly goods. Yeah, some perfumes, what have you. That's what I, that's, I don't have room for that in my bathroom. I have a very small bathroom. But um, anyway, so very pretty. Thank you for but joining us. That was mine. And I'll um, get grab the camera here and do some close ups so you can see no more dead mouse. Not that there actually ever was one. But I kept everybody away from it and I got to paint it because I absolutely love it. It's like a 1930s beautiful small kitchen. It, it, oh, it, yeah. it was mine. It everybody was, mine. was eyeballing it, but nobody wanted to clean out the dead mouse. So, so now I know what to do to keep people away from pieces I like. That's right. So uh, thanks for joining us. I hope you have enjoyed this very short video and our slight interview with Sue okay. on, uh, you know, how to keep people away from painting the pieces you That's want right. to paint. That's right. There's a dead mouse in there. Remember that one. <laughs> don't try this at home, folks. <laughs> thanks, guys. You still want lunch? Good.